an hour, so you had to fill it. Yes, there's some uh, filler stuff in there. There you go. <coughs> okay, where was I at here? I gotta do the. Come up, but there's a light. There you go. I don't know your fact filming already. Okay, we're measuring up to the right main bearing right now, so we got to find out what size the shaft is. The light's actually hurting me. So, oh, we got here about nine tenths. Flexion's bad. There are other reflections. Yeah, well, I got an eye and I got a bright light in my one eye and I'm trying to look at a mic in the other eye and it's not helping. Maybe it'll be all dark or all light. Can't be mixed. Here you go. Yeah, it looks like we're on zero on that one. Zero. So we're going to call it zero. This is like nine tenths on one spot. But Yeah, see how the zero lines up? Yep. The first line's actually zero. Plus also if you go over here, it was that mark there was pretty close to. So yeah, so we're gonna call that zero. So that'd be one two fifty zero. <clears throat> this is an old bearing, I'm assuming we're using the old bearing. Because he's cheap. We're not saying on video, did we? Yep, I think we did. Okay. But it actually does still look good. So. But that's a factory bearing, so it has right, one one less bearing than the older style. Is that correct? Uh, two less. Two less. Yeah. If you go to the two-piece bearing, where you got two different individual ones that look like this, you pick up one roller. If you go back to the old stuff with a cage, you pick up one more. So you're actually down two with these late ones. Save the fortune in engineering on those, huh? Manufacturing, rather? Oh, it's cheap to make these things, yeah. Boy, they must be saving millions on these things. The other good part was every one you measure the same size is two tenths over. Oh, look at it. It's two tenths over. Doesn't matter what color code it is. Hmm. That one is actually almost three tenths on that one because it's probably got a high spot in it. Yeah, it must be a green one. Green or standard? There you go. Like standard is standard. two tenths over. But every one you measure is two tenths. So new, used, gray ones, red ones, blue ones, they're all the same. The aftermarket one, half are all the same, and other half they actually have a couple different sizes. But it's different. So that goes in there eventually. All right, so this here is two tenths over. So that means it's four tenths over. Then you got to add in your 9 tenths clearance, so that makes 1.3 thou over standard, is what that needs to be. So it needs to be 13. So we're going to take our 1750, zero, dial in our mic, our bore gauge, zero it. It appears to be the same as yesterday. It must be the same crappy low temperature today as yesterday. There you go. Yep, it's working slow, right? Yeah, everything's working slow. 50 degree temperatures will do that. <coughs> okay, so we need 13 and we have about 9. Oh, look, it's Is perfect. Is it 9 all the way through? No. Yeah, look, it's perfect. 13? It's 14 now. Can you hear the roughness in that? Yep. Yeah, that's good. That's, that's perfect. Somewhere between 9 and 14. No, we're at 5 and 5. Nine. Somewhere between five and a half and fourteen. There's six and a half. That's almost perfectly round. With no taper or anything, right? Okay, it's gonna be hard to hone at the thirteen. We're already at fourteen. Yep. <laughs> but we're gonna do our best. Exactly. So you can see how rough the finish is. Yep. Real nice and smooth. Exactly. You brand new. It. You can hear it. Yeah, brand new. Perfect. Never seen better. We 
just got done doing a pin bushing, so that was off camera. We did do a couple things while you were screwing around back, screwing up your heads. We didn't show the video of the port and head, did we? Nope. That's top secret. That is top secret. You're going to have to watch the one of the other videos on how to port. Uh, let's see, I need third one. Third one. You know why I need the third one? Because the second one's too small and the fourth one's too big. Makes sense. Pull the uh, light switch up there. See better. <coughs> yeah, marginally better. All right, so now we're going to go to number two. Stones over here. I think that was the one I was using. I forget. So we have a fine and a coarse. Now normally I'd only do fine because I don't have much to work with, but when it's this far out around, I have to use cores. Bring it up to snow. Okay, you gotta make sure you don't hit anything back here like the oiler. Right. On the side. A little bit of pressure on that. Well, before I get too involved here. See these blood makers right here? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, take those out with a file. It wouldn't hurt to knock them down a little bit. Just just enough to you know not quite bleed as much. That's optional though, of course. See I'm not bleeding now. This side's not as bad, but doesn't hurt to just kind of knock down a couple of them just you know, just to be different. See that one they radius real nice but all the other ones they left nice and sharp. They saved the tenth of a penny on taking that out. Well it costs money to deburr. Yeah. Here's the oil must be cold. Kind of like everything else around here. Yep. Must be this one. Oh, I thought I put a new one on it recently. These ones here would be for panhead motors. We're not doing those right now. So what do all these SNs mean over here? SN, SN, and a sloppy hmm. SN. Does that mean it's small? Maybe. <laughs> Except for where it's oversized. Or does Sam, uh, somebody make it, screwed it up? I'm thinking Sam screwed it up. Alright, let's see what we got here. Alright, see if that's a better stuff. Please. have to work around the problem area. There you go. Now is it is it just the stone or is it because it's so far out? I mean it's tapered for some reason I got the uh, some of the stones aren't matched up. So that means I gotta deal with it. 
which I can do. Sounds better. Well, I can deal with the problem if I know what the problem is. Got that same roughy ass finish as what they have. Of course. Alright, uh, so the tubes are already up the size. Oh yeah. It also appears we're almost round also. And what do we hit? 12 all the way through? Yeah, this one's at 13, which is where we want to stop. This one out here is at 14 and a half. We have to look up top of that. If you pull out, the lights off too. Where's the light? Right there, the bottom one. This one? Oh, there we go. Now pull off. There we go. It actually looks clear with the light off. Okay. See, this one's at 16. Yep. This one's at 14. Okay, so we got a rough end within about three tenths now. Before we were at a thou out or something. Mm -hmm. so, so it took me what about 10 swipes back and forth, maybe 12 to bring it into semi close. I can live with three tenths out of, you know, out of round and taper to it, but I prefer to be within one. And I'm rarely above two because I really don't like being that, that bad. But it's common for these ones to come in, whether it's aftermarket or hardly, it doesn't matter who makes the case. They, for some reason, they can't seem to make a hole round or straight or true or size correct either. I'm not sure what the deal is, but I'm sure there's a reason for it. Get to 50% scale, it starts to go blurry. Alright, measure here. Okay, we are at uh, about 18 there, 18 there, and just that two, so that's two tenths out. 18, I drop to 16, and we're at seven, 16 and a half. And we want a 13, remember? Yep. So now you gotta go oversized bearings. So how many oversized bearings are we gonna go to? That we have to figure out. So if you go two tenths out from that one, it'll be four tenths bigger total, which means you go from 13 to 17, which we're right in the middle of right now. That would be all right because we're two over on one spot and one under on the other. We can run them at two right now. Right. If it'll work. The, uh, if I go to a four tenths bigger bearing, that's eight tenths bigger. I have to hone out another three to four tenths to make the hole more round and true and straight. So now I can go see what size bearings I got. Go run right out. It's been hard to get them anymore. I used to have all the different sizes, but anymore it's getting hard. So we are going to go with, what's this one supposed to be, I don't know, doesn't say. Standard, this one doesn't say what it is, so, he has two pieces of thing, mm -hmm. that's why I like them. It's really, really hard to come up with these two-piece two ones anymore. Everything now is pretty much just one-piece crap. 
And there isn't anyone that manufactures them anymore. Yeah, Dixie used to sell them, but Dixie's no longer, and everything's up on eBay and who knows where else. And for some reason, I'm not seeing the bearings being sold yet. Here's my mic. Somebody's got pallets full of these things. Okay, well that one is actually standard, which is two tenths over. So we don't want that. Nope. One. And it's actually marked as standard. You find the standard someplace? No, it, oh, um, it's oh, it's that one. So we're gonna call. That means we're gonna have to have a uh, six tenths over burns. Four or six, four tenths or six tenths over. That's what we need. Here's some one-piece ones. Yeah, so most of these maybe are all the same. This one here, they're not claiming what oversize it is. Probably because it's a secret. You can say they're four tenths. This one, six forty-one, six twenty-eight. This one is. Well, that's 20, it says standard, this has 26, it is standard, so you never know what you got. This one here is 28, my guess is it's going to be 2 tenths, but you don't know until you measure it. Oh, look at that, standard. So that's a standard, that was number 28. 41, 49, 28, got a bunch of 8 tenths. This is bad mix because they have one size one and one size the other. Right. They do that to keep, keep you on board. I've even had them where they got different bearings in the same cage, which means you can't mix and match. This one's 4, which is probably what we need. So these ones here, I don't know what size these are going to be, but my guess is they're going to be small. Until you cut them up and measure every damn one, you don't know what you have yet. So I don't care what's on the package, it doesn't matter. These are genuine Harley ones. These are Harley's manufacturer, which is Sonex, but they're not Harley. It's about a three. That's a three tenths. Two tenths. Two and a half tenths. So we're going to call this a nice common zero 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 three. They don't make that size. No, there's one. They made that one. They made that one. And with this one, this is standard. That's junk. This one here was standard. Got a bunch of standards. See, I don't use standards a lot because the holes are always screwed up in the hole. Got a bunch of eights in here. I can fix that. Oh, there you go. Dad would fix it. Some down to only one four tenths left. Oh, we got these ones over here. I'm assuming these are all four. That would make us eight. Let's see, our race was what size? It was uh, two tenths over? Two tenths over, correct. So eight would be ten, plus clearance would be nineteen. We got two on our high side and sixteen on our low side. That puts us right kind of in the middle. So I got a little bit of light honing. I should make these work if these are actually really eight. Uh, or I mean four, these are four. Yeah. Uh, lines up right here in the four. Yep. That's why you call them four. 
not four thousandths, it's four tenths. But, uh, <coughs> Actually, these are the ones I like, the doubles. These are more like three and a half, that's close enough to four. See when you put them together? Mm -hmm. See how they go away from each other a little bit? Because you're picking up a... a well, actually this one here was, no, this one is picking up the same number. Mm. Huh. Mm. No, this one is the same. See, it's all the way around? Yep. Back in the old days, there was a little one different. There's been a change again. It happens. Either way, it's still better to be double because these are independent. They don't cock. Right. These big long ones, they twist and cock and lock up on you when they try to roll, and then they start sliding, which burns them up. So it's always better to have long, have your short rollers, not a bunch of real long rollers. Okay, we got four, eight, so we need, uh, we need what, 19 now? Right, and I think we're at two, uh, two with the low. Two was our worst, six was our low, or 15, I forget, 15 I think was the next one. Okay, so I gotta see if I'm going on the inside or outside is where I need to work. Okay, we're at 18 right there. 17. And back up to 18 and a half there. And we're two on the outside. Okay, top to bottom is 17, 16 and a half, 17. So top and bottom is where the work is. It's pretty even, so I, can, I have to hone equally. So we got to let the hone do its job. <coughs> if I keep the pressure down a little bit, I'm not force it. It's, if it doesn't blaze up, Cut more truly. If it starts to glaze up, then it starts cutting more truly. Right. If you put a lot of pressure on it, it'll just cut a lot of metal out. So there's a trade off in the pressure. Just kind of feel it out, see what it feels like. Accordingly. You know, top to bottom is our problem area. Eighteen and a half. Eighteen. Eighteen and a half quarter. Our loose spot is this way. We're nineteen. Nineteen. There's our two. So we're one under and one over. So I'm going to get loose the pipe. Go ahead and hone it. The same thing we just did again. It's got fairly light pressure on it right now. So you have to know your machine and how it works and what feels are and all that. You can't teach yourself that, you just have to do it and Down again. Okay, 18 and a half, almost 19. 19 and a quarter right there. You're way out of the very edge here, it's 19 and a half, but we're way out of here. You're way on the inside in there, or just under two. Turn it 90 degrees. One, two. 19 and a half. So we're between 18 and a half and 2. Which is what? Is one and a half? That's a tenth and a half out of whack now. Versus where we started at, which was way the hell off. And we also have now a very, very fine finish in here. And it's almost a polished finish now. So there's very, very little break in because it's nice and smooth. If you have a real rough finish, there's a lot of break in. If you have a smooth finish, not a lot of break in. But you do have to be closer on your fitments when you're, there's nothing to break in. It has to be nice and straight. Okay, so I'm going to go clean this up, and we'll come back and we'll check the um, 
what it feels like on the crank. So we'll be back.